thank you for inviting me to present my work on uh, Senegalese. So I will present here uh, my work on uh, savings and sharing pressure in the extended family. So uh, let's start with a quote that I collected uh, on the field, um, which states that uh, if you have the money, you have to give it, but if you don't, you don't need to. In Senegal, you don't have the possibility to save because the family is here, there is a pressure, there is the electricity bill of your brother that you need to pay, there are your parents to help, but the moment you start to do something, then they will let you in peace. That's why I started to build my house on credit. So that was a teacher in the Pune Road of Dakar, and uh, it stressed uh, the mechanism I want to highlight here that uh, the larger the pressure you feel from your family, the lower you may be able to save. So uh, I will give some elements of context uh, about Senegal and more generally Sub-Saharan Africa. So it's a context where uh, there is limited access to financial markets, low welfare provision, and structural vulnerability of household to shocks. This may induce two well-documented observations. First, that uh, kinship and social network are really preponderant and they are mainly used as informal insurance providers uh, as uh, referred to in the literature as risk sharing and um, this is, has been shown to be uh, especially efficient for idiosyncratic shocks against idiosyncratic shocks sorry uh, another uh, point is that uh, low savings rate, rates are achieved uh, sorry for the typo, and while savings are a mean to protect against more aggregated shocks. Um, so there is few evidence on the effect of social network on resource allocation, uh, accumulation decision, and I will try here to investigate the role of the extended family in these decisions. So what do I call extended family is uh, the set of relationships uh, that are acquired by blood, marriage, or adoption by someone. And uh, as for blood types, uh, this is typically quite exogenous because it's not a matter of choice. And um, kinship entails uh, informal redistribution visit is a member, across members. And it more specifically for Senegal, uh, it's a lineage-based uh, society where uh, with polynuclear household, meaning that there are some subunits that are rather autonomous within the same household, and each household or individual is in connected with other members of the kinship networks outside of the household. And uh, we found in uh, doing field work that there is a really importance of the household of origin, meaning the household where you within uh, you um, in which you grown up, uh, where with your parents, uh, siblings, cousins, etc. Seventy percent of in and out transfer in value take place within the kin transfer, according to our data. So let me briefly start with a brief literature review. Um, and I will start by saying that there is a recent interest in the economic literature on savings, and one of the main questions that was that people want to try to answer is that how to increase savings in developing countries. And uh, one answer that came out um, was that people really need commitment device in order to increase uh, demand for savings. And uh, what does what underlying cost for saving does its need for commitment reveal? Mainly three uh, arguments have been put forward. First, that people um, are forgetting about uh, saving, uh, so it's an argument of limited attention, or people just value too much their present, so they prefer to consume now than consume later, and uh, so more procrastination behaviors. And finally that people face financial pressure from their kin or social network uh, for redistribution, leaving nothing left to save. So this, this third argument is the one I will focus here today. Uh, all the three can be complements or substitutes. Uh, I'm not tackling this issue right here. So uh, another strength, uh, part of the liter uh, economic literature is looking at the role of social networks. And traditionally, uh, it has been more focused on positive aspects of social networks, meaning more risk sharing, social learning, etc. Recent works, however, are showing more balanced evidence, where with, uh, for example, Di Falco and Verte in uh, last year, we published a paper 
in, sorry, in South Africa, where uh, he shows that uh, households are more exposed to social pressure. Uh, proxy, they proxy social pressure by the number of uh, members that were invited uh, in the household in the past year, spend more on non shareable goods that he, they characterize as investment in the house rather than shareable goods in order to escape the famine. Uh, Jaquela and other in a lab experiment in Kenya showed that there is a distortion towards less visible but and less lucrative investment due to sharing norms in order to ex escape sharing norms in Kenya. And Ballon uh, and his co authors show in a paper entitled Pretending, Pretending to be Poor, Boring to Escape Forced Solidarity in Cameroon, based on the qualitative evidence and uh, um, on a theoretical signaling model. They show that people, in order to um, be able to refuse a demand for transfer, um, rather prefer to uh, pay interest on a loan so as to signal the fact that they are scarcity, scarce resources. So what uh, I will do today, I will try to understand the mechanism that I observed on the film concerning the role of uh, the family, the, what I call family tax on saving decision. And more specifically, the, how the, the, the size and the position in the extended family influence both saving and transfer decision. So to start with, I conducted with a colleague uh, a qualitative survey in uh, Senegal where we traced uh, 35 uh, individuals from different um, families, so several members of the same uh, extended family in different locations, in order to better understand the mechanism that are at play between transfers and savings. So we could uh, interview both a saver and uh, a sender of transfer and a receiver, for example. So two main points uh, were raised. That first, uh, red red redistribution to the network is found as a duty, even as a pride. But uh, as soon as you uh, are discussing a bit more with uh, m most of the people, they will acknowledge that it's also a burden. A burden because uh, lower revenue is left for savings. So there is, they say that, uh, as the quote were mentioning, that the, there is really an incapacity to save, and uh, that in order to be able to save, they have to commit themselves ex ante into costly strategies of savings, where uh, by, uh, in order to be able to say no once they receive a demand for transfer. So this means that there will be an increase in non-shareable or non-observable savings. So Rosca, for example, can be a tool where uh, it's a public commitment uh, towards the, the community to uh, participate every week into the ROSCA, so ROSCA Rotative uh, Saving, uh, uh, credit, uh, saving and uh, Credit Association, and, uh, which is called Tontine in Senegal. And um, uh, yes, yeah, so it's a public commitment to save. And uh, so if someone is asking you uh, a transfer and if the only money you have is for this uh, participation, you are allowed to say no because it's something that people respect. So people are also investing into Rosca in order to be able to say no. Um, or non-shareable non can be uh, assets that are non-divisible, for example. So um, in my data, what I will consider as non-shareable, according to uh, what was said also in our qualitative survey, will be money left at the bank, even if it's at 300 meters, because the moment you people are, are asking you, you don't have the money on yourself directly available. So uh, they will say that uh, they don't have the money, and uh, even if it's really a, at the shopkeeper ne next door. So bank, shopkeeper, Rosca, and divisible goods are what I call non-shareable savings. So if you look at, uh, so it enables people to uh, be to to to, to, be, to have more control on uh, the demand for of transfer on these assets. Uh, it's for the agreement of preference for presence. It's also a commitment not to consume right now. But uh, in case of need, it's true that it's not directly available. There are some entry costs to open a bank account, especially in this country. There are some transportation costs if you are not directly uh, uh, ne next door. Uh, it requires in all the types of savings to put to entrust uh, the third party. 
and uh, generally returns are low or no interest, even for the bank account, since people usually don't use a saving account, but just a check account with no interest. And I'm speaking about also a country with 95% uh, of the population, which is Muslim, who is Muslim and uh, who, uh, where, uh, who follows the uh, Islamic rule for many of them. Um, I said that uh, Roska is risky since there is uh, many Roska that end up uh, where people don't receive the money they put into the Roska. And still people continue to use it. And shareable uh, savings for me is the money that it's kept at home. So it's directly available in case of need, but it will be easily captured by peers and easily consumed by oneself. And there are no returns. Um, so, what are the expected effects we may f uh, have from having a larger extended family according to the, your situation within your family network? So, I differentiate within um, if you are experiencing some difficulties, you may expect just to have uh, lower savings, but to re benefit from the network by receiving net out transfer. Uh, whereas if you are uh, successful and if it's observable, you may expect your saving to decrease as well because of the transfers that to, and to send a lot of transfer to being net receive, net sender. Whereas if, you're, um, if you have an economic success but you are able to commit yourself into some coping strategy, your saving might go up and uh, you may con have a better control of your transfer where, see, by seeing that your net transfer are decreasing. So what are the data I'm using to carry out this uh, uh, study? I'm using a poverty and family structure from Senegal, which is a nationally representative survey conducted in 2006 and 2007 uh, by Deville, Lambert, Safir, and Silla. Uh, it's um, a sample of uh, 1,750 households for 14,000 uh, individuals spread over all the country. Um, as I said, it's a, a largely uh, Muslim country uh, with also the size of eight individuals. Uh, also, they are extended both uh, vertically and horizontally. So, uh, to go briefly, we observed that uh, women are the ones who save the, uh, are more frequently, uh, save more, more women are savings, but in value terms, uh, this, there is no strong difference between men and women. Women are more saving into Roscas, while men are more savings into banks. Um, and uh, we observe that savers are richer, are more civil servants, and are slightly more brothers and sisters. Uh, transfer, so as I said as already before, uh, a large majority of transfer is, uh, is transferred within the family, 72. Uh, at least 80% uh, of uh, the sample have at least received or sent a transfer to a family member. Uh, yes, let's go to the, so my empirical strategy, it's really straightforward. I'm looking at uh, the effect of having uh, many siblings and uh, uh, having a specific position interacted with and the interaction of the two on savings and transfers decision. So I'm considering the siblings because it's, some, it's an exogenous proxy of the social, the kinship network, since uh, it's not a matter of choice by, uh, by the individual. I will, uh, I will proxy uh, the position in the network by considering social mobility relative to the father, meaning uh, whether I'm uh, holding, uh, working in the formal sector while my father was an agriculture, a farmer, and uh, whether I attended at least uh, secondary education while my father was, uh, did not. So I'm using a bench of control, meaning of uh, at the individual level, like age, uh, education, marital status, being the head of the uh, household or as a cell, uh, revenues, employment sector, occupational status, and at the household level, the household side, the relative cell side, cell is the sub unit of the also that I'm studying, I can have in the data, the share of inactive and the parental background. I'm uh, putting a neighborhood fixed effect to be able to control for any enumerator bias, time uh, to correct for any seasonal bias as well since, uh, as I said, the survey was taking place during uh, two years. 
no, over uh, one year. And uh, Crystal Standard there was in uh, the, uh, the also name. So here it's uh, the regression where I look at the direct effect of SIP sheet on uh, savings. So the first column is total savings in CFA francs. So the second is uh, the log. The second is the ratio over non shareable uh, savings over total savings. I impute uh, one, uh, one CFA franc to everyone uh, at home. And um, the second is the log of out transfer, the log of out transfer made on a regular basis. And finally, uh, the net out transfer to see the effect in net. So what we can see here is that uh, when we look at the average effect of uh, the number of savings on savings, that uh, one more savings is increasing savings and uh, increasing the probability, uh, the amount that is out transfer. For, that was for male. Here for female, we see no effect on savings, but we see that uh, and a balanced effect for uh, transfer. However, we see that in net, it, women are more net receivers. Uh, so when we look at uh, the interaction between the number of siblings, so the size of the network and the position within the network, we see that having uh, a high economic status without social mobility, so meaning that I'm working in a formal job but my father uh, was not a farmer, increase the level of savings, so by 40,000 for CFA, while being uh, working in the former sector while my father was a farmer, so meaning having an high economic status result, uh, with social mobility, decreases my, uh, my uh, savings by 10,000 for CFA and by 29% uh, uh, of, uh, so 0.33, meaning 29% of decrease in uh, savings for for savings. Why? We see on the transfer side that uh, both cases uh, when you have a high status, you transfer more. So for women, what we see is that um, here I'm looking at the uh, high economy status is for the husband, meaning when the husband is uh, working in the formal sector while her father was a farmer or not. And we see that just having a husband working in the former sector, whatever was the background of the father, uh, decreased your level of savings, but has no effect on transfer. What, why we observe no effect on transfer? Uh, one explanation may be that uh, the husband is directly sending the transfer to the low, in low family um, uh, result, transferring through the spouse. So it's not registered under the spouse. But uh, that the, fa the more the transfer, the husband is transferring. Yes, I will be done. The the more uh, the husband will transfer to the to his in law family, the lower the spouse will save. That's what we okay. So if I wrap up the result, what we found is that on average, when we are semi so meaning uh, whatever the position you have among your sheep. -ship, um, the, more, the, the more savings you have, the more you are savings, so saving, and sorry, the more you are transferring. Uh, but no, in net, it's, you don't find anything because on average, every, all the transfer that are sent out should also be received by someone. But whereas when you look at high economy status without mobility, you, you see that uh, it decreases your savings and your transfer, while when it's salient social mobility, you have a decrease in savings associated with transfers. For women, you see that uh, all, any uh, econ high economy status will decrease your uh, amount saved. So, um, I also tried with an alternative measure, as I said, of position where uh, I looked at attending at least secondary, educa sec secondary education while your father did or did not attend school, and I found the same results. So far, uh, this is uh, suggestive evidence, uh, of course not causal, on the fact that kinship pressure as proxy by the number of siblings reduces savings for individuals who had a social mobility uh, episode relative to their father. Um, one question you may ask is what alternative competing channel other than redistribution through transfer could explain the effect of savings on savings for this particular position in the family? Um, I, I don't see a consistent story that could explain, but if you have any, I would be really happy. And uh, to learn 
about it. So to wrap up, this is a study that is on the role of informal redistribution and saving decision. And uh, we show that a lower capacity to save and uh, distorted preference for some type of savings. Uh, and uh, since savings are important because they enable people to face uh, risk and to invest and thus to escape uh, poverty trap, uh, I think it's uh, an important part of the research and more focus should be on the cost and benefit of such informal redistribution within the family network. Thank you.